In this video, we're going to wrap up the CUDA software free worksheet graphing absolute value functions. And I'll leave a link in the description below so you know how to get to that worksheet. The tips and tricks to remember, we're going to find the turning point first. Once we find that turning point, we're going to pick two x values that are the same distance from that turning point to use as x coordinates. And since they're the same distance from the turning point and the absolute value function is symmetric, we know that those will have the same y value, so we only need to actually plug in one x value to solve for both of them. So let's go ahead and get started. The turning point occurs when what's inside the absolute value is equal to zero. We know that by choosing the opposite number, we're going to get to zero. So the turning point occurs when x is equal to negative four, since negative four plus four equals zero. Also note that if this absolute value is zero, we're only left with two outside of that, so that y value is going to be equal to a positive two when x is negative four. So here we have our vertex, negative four, two. We're going to pick an x value that's one less than negative four, so that's going to be negative five, and an x value that's one greater than negative four, so that's going to be negative three. And like I said, since the absolute value function is symmetric, the y values will be the same. So let's just plug in negative five. We have y equal to the opposite of negative five plus four, the absolute value of that quantity, plus two. We have y equal to the opposite of the absolute value of negative five plus four is going to be a negative one. And then we're still adding that two. So y is equal to the opposite of the absolute value of negative one. So it's equal to the opposite of a positive one, since the absolute value of negative one is positive one, and then we're adding that two. So y is going to be equal to negative one plus two, which is a positive one. So when x equals negative five, y is positive one, and same when x is negative three, y is also positive one. We're gonna go ahead and graph those three points. So negative five, one, negative four, two, and negative three, one. Then we can connect them with two separate lines intersecting or meeting at the vertex. And that's the answer for number nine. In number 10, set up our x, y, t table. This is now zero when x is a positive one, since one minus one is zero. So the turning point or the vertex occurs when x is a positive one and y is also a positive one. So I'm going to plug in zero for x and solve to get y, and that y value is going to be the same for when x is a positive two, since zero is one less than one, and two is one greater than one, which is the x coordinate for our turning point. So plugging in zero, we get y equals the opposite of zero minus one, at the absolute value of that quantity, plus one. So y equals the opposite of the absolute value of zero minus one, which is the absolute value of negative one, plus one. So y is going to be equal to the opposite of the absolute value of negative one is a negative one, since the absolute value of negative one is one, and we're taking the opposite of that, that's negative one, and then we still have to add one. So y is going to be equal to negative one plus one, which is zero. So when x is zero, y is zero, and when x is two, y is also zero. Now that we have three points, let's go ahead and graph this absolute value function. We have the point zero, zero, we have the point one, one, and we have the point two, zero. So we have two lines with opposite slopes meeting at the vertex. And that's the answer for number 10. And number 11, same thing. Set up our x, y, t table. The turning point occurs when x is equal to a positive two, since two minus two is zero. And what's left is that positive four, so the y value is four. We're going to pick one less than two, so that's going to be positive one, and we're going to pick one greater than two. That's going to be a positive three. So when x is one and when x is three, the y values are going to be the same. 
Let's go ahead and plug in 3. We have y equals the opposite of the absolute value of 3 minus 2, and that quantity gets added with 4. So we have y equals the opposite of the absolute value of a positive 1 plus 4. The absolute value of 1 is 1, so we have negative 1 since it's the opposite. So negative 1 plus 4, so that y is going to be equal to 3. So when x is 1, y is 3, and when x is 3, y is also 3. Plotting those points, we have 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 3. Then we're just going to draw two lines intersecting or meeting at the vertex. And that's the answer for number 11. Lastly, we're going to move on to number 12. The turning point occurs when x is equal to 1, since 1 minus 1 is 0. So y will be negative 1. Now we've always been doing 1 less than 1 and 1 greater than 1, but I want to show you that it doesn't matter how many steps you are away from 1, as long as the distance from that vertex x coordinate is the same, the y's will be equivalent. So let's go 2 away from 1. Going 2 less than 1 will leave us with negative 1. Going 2 greater than 1 will leave us with a positive 3. Now these y values are going to be the same, but I'm going to plug in both negative 1 and 3 so that you can see that. Plugging in a negative 1 for x, we get the opposite of the absolute value of negative 1 minus 1 minus 1. So we get the opposite of the absolute value of negative 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2 and then minus 1. The absolute value of negative 2 is a positive 2, but we're taking the opposite of that. So that's negative 2 minus 1, which is equal to a negative 3. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 3. Now let's plug in a positive 3. We have the opposite of the absolute value of 3 minus 1 minus 1. The opposite of the absolute value of 2 minus 1 will give us the opposite of 2, which is negative 2, since the absolute value of 2 is a positive 2, and we're doing the opposite of that. So negative 2 minus 1 will give us negative 3. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 3. And you can see, indeed, that the y values are the same. Let's go ahead and plot these three points. So we have negative 1, negative 3, 1, negative 1, and then 3, negative 3. And then you just draw your two straight lines that connect into the vertex to get the function for this absolute value equation. And as always, any subscription or any like of a video is greatly appreciated. Also, please feel free to comment below if you have any requests for a worksheet or any questions about what we went over in this video.